In this video, Lee is going to be implementing the Raise Sculpt tool. Yeah, yeah. I promised that I was going to make it more difficult than uh, the other one. So to make it more difficult, we're going to write this one in assembly. Sweet. <laughs> That'll be fun. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah, right. But you have at it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done assembly in probably 25 years. So we're going to start off with a 4-each. And the reason we're starting off with a for each is because we're passing in a loop of pat or a list of patches. And we're going to have to iterate through that patch or that list of patches and modify all the vertices that are inside of it that are within the range of our brush. So that means we need a for loop or a for each loop. So our for each loop is going to have a for patch in patches. And inside of that, we're going to need to keep track of a couple of things. One is going to be our mesh. And the mesh is going to be a reference to our patch.mesh filter. And as you can see, we don't have a mesh filter inside of our patch. So we're going to have to fix that. But once we do have a mesh filter inside of our patch, we're going to look for that mesh filter's mesh. So let's go get this Isn't mesh. Isn't that F going to be capitalized? Um, yeah, probably. But, you know, I could go refactor it and just to be right. But this no. is good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> All right, let's go to train patch, open this guy up. All right, so here's our train patch. Right now, our mesh filter is private. We're going to make them public. And I guess that means I should probably make them a getter. And oh, That's not going to work very well, is it? Um, so let's make it a getter with a private set. So that will take care of that part, but we're also going to have to rename them. So that will give us a uh, mesh filter that is now accessible from inside of our raising sculpt tool. First part done. All right. We also need to keep track of the vertices that are in that mesh. So we're going to make another variable called vertices. And we're going to assign that to be mesh.vertices. Let me check something here to make sure. Yeah, I'm going to do that. All right. Another change on the fly. This will probably come back to bite me, but... Uh, we're going to take our patches here. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to get the vertices. I don't think I'm using the meshes for this one anymore. Okay. So we only need the vertices. I simplify it. Why define another, another uh, variable to a reference that just to build another one, we just build one and call it good. All right. So we're going to need a for loop because we're going to have to iterate through each one of our vertexes. So i is going to equal zero while i is less than the length of our vertices array. Now, I'm going to take this bit of code remove it from there and put it inside of our loop because this is where we're going to need it. Now we need to keep track of our distance. We need to know basically how far the uh, the vertex that we're sampling is away from the position of our brush. And the reason we want to do this is we're going to use it as an early out. We're going to use it as a test and go, okay, is this vertice within the range of our brush? If it is, then let's do something with it. If it's not, we're going to continue and process the next vertice that way, 
or vertex. vertex. <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> so we, so we don't uh, waste time with uh, vertexes or vertices that shouldn't be manipulated. Mm -hmm. And you think English wasn't my first language or something. All right. So we're going to calculate our distance based off of a vector two. So that works by defining two vectors to compare against each other, or comparing two vectors, two vector, two vectors, that is. So... Our first vector is going to be built based off of our vertices element i dot x plus our patch dot position dot x. Come on, there we go. And I can copy this next bit because it's pretty much the same thing. So the second element that we're going to be calculating is going to be the Z part of it. And then we're going to compare that whole thing other against a uh, another new vector that is built along, uh, along the position that we send in, which is our brush position. So position.x and position.y. Now the reason I am doing this is if I were to calculate this based off of vector 3, because our brush position is a vector 3 and our vertice is a vector 3. That's all well and good, but our distance would give us a three-dimensional distance or uh, the distance as it would be in 3D space. I don't really care about the y-axis. Matter of fact, I want to ignore it on purpose because it would be completely possible to have a vertex that is so high or so low above the brush that it would miss this check entirely while it should still be adjusted. Mm -hmm. So we're converting everything to vector twos. So we're, in a sense, making sure that our brushes orthogonal, meaning that it doesn't care about the height of any vertexes or vertices. So now I promised that we were going to use the distance as an early out. So we're going to take our distance and we're going to see if our distance is greater than our brush size divided by 2. If it is, then we are going to continue, which means we're just going to skip the rest of the calculations and go grab the next vertex. Now, if we uh, happen to find something, we need to calculate the sample point. Now this gets into a little bit of interesting math. It's not too hard once you sort it out, but while you're trying to throw equations to figure out what you need to be sampling, it, it was a pain. <laughs> this is converting, essentially, the um, vertex is, the vertex is, wow, that is really the vertex is because mm -hmm. it's possessive. The vertex is um, positioned in the world to where it would fall relative to the brush inside of that um, space. So we can calculate where the sample point needs to be for the brush. It's kind of a mouthful. But what we end up doing is pretty much the same as this calculation right here. So I'm going to copy this so I don't have to type it a second time. No, actually, I could have just did that. But uh, so while the first part of this looks the same as up here, we have to subtract the brush's position from those numbers. So this will convert the world position of that vertex into the brush space so we can build the sample point. And then we can take the sample point, send that in to the sample along with the brush size, 
and what the brush will spit back out is going to be our height. So uh, this will be our new height. Or actually, it's not a height, it's a difference. So we'll call it weight instead. Matter of fact, I'll call it sample weight to keep with my notes. So this will be our sample weight. Now, the other thing that we want to do before we do anything with the sample weight is we want to modify it by our strength. So we're going to multiply it by our strength. If you remember, our strength is a value between 0 and 1. So if we have a value of 1, we get the full effect of the sample weight. As we go lower down to 0, sample weight has less and less effect all the way down until we dial it down to 0, at which point the sample weight will be zeroed out. Now this is a sample weight because we're not setting the new a new height completely. What we're doing is we're modifying that um, vertex's height by the sample weight. So what we're going to do is take the vertice or vertex at element i, so the vertice array, the element that is at uh, i. We're going to add a new vector 3 to it that will have 0 for x. It will have our sample weight as the y offset and 0 is z. So what this is going to do is depending on what our sample weight is, we're going to add more height to whatever height is already stored in the y of this particular vertex, which is why this is called the raising sculpt tool. So all it does is it just raises by a certain amount. And because the only brush that we have available to us is that hard edge brush, this value will always come back as either 0 or 1 unless we modify it by strength. And then if we modify it by strength, it could be anything from 0 to 1. Okay. But it will always have a, a, uh, a linear, or not a linear fall off, a, uh, a stepped fall off. Mm -hmm. So you'll either have full value or no value. Now... This will loop through every single patch that is inside of our patches list. But as we go through, before we drop out of this for each, but after we finish the inner loop, we need to take... Oh, no, I was wrong. There was a reason why we have that uh, meshes, but that's all right. Patch dot um, mesh filter dot mesh is going to equal our vertices. That was why I had a separate bash out there. Because we cannot um, take our vertices directly this way. So I do need that. So var mesh equals so I'll take that, put that over there. See? I tried to get creative on the fly and look at what happened. <laughs> All right, so why are you still complaining? Oh, because I'm not using mesh. So mesh dot vertices. It would ah, that's not gonna work either. I gotta type the right thing. That'll work. It would have worked if I would have typed out the whole line. Yes, it would have. <laughs> I like going back and forth. I know you do, you know. Just being confusing. Could just undo a handful of times and just put dot vertices in, but I'm just saying. I could. Or, you know, I could just go like this and oh, Lee, copy Lee. that. What? Nothing. <laughs> Ta -da. I'm good at copy and pasting, okay? <laughs> I do it all the time, all day long, for hour after hour. I, I subscribe fully to the shotgun method of coding <laughs> for R&D. Yeah, with buckshot. Of course. <laughs> okay, so okay. is this anything else in um, this particular video? Not in this one, but uh, like we said, we can't test anything right. until we get everything implemented. So, But you're getting close. You're getting very close. Yeah. Well, I know there's no syntax error. But whether or not it, it works is something we'll find out towards the end. Okay, fantastic. Well, then, with that, that is going to conclude this video. Thanks a lot.